So let's study the Word of God and we're going to continue our series regarding um, the God of New Beginning. And today I would like to share with you finding God's strength through His grace. So finding strength through God's grace. Okay, it's very, very powerful and I, I believe it gives us encouragement to move forward so finding strength through God's grace don't you know that there are so many people looking for an answer in their personal life there are so many things going on in their lives we have so many issues in our lives how many of you you have uh, minor issues major issues 
Whatever it is, it's an issue. And there are times it's really hard for us to reconnect to our spiritual faith because of so many issues going on in our lives. And once we can't uh, control those issues, and it keeps coming uh, in our mind, sometimes if we don't know the Word of God or we don't have the desire to know God very well, sad to say there are so many people, you know, they turn around, run away, and they blame God, they blame other people, they blame their circumstances, and, you know, they close every door, they put some walls, and they isolate themselves. So today we are going to study one character in the Word of God and several uh, stories from the Bible that speaks about how they found God's grace in the midst of their crisis, how they experienced the goodness of God in the midst of their trials. Okay? In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, a very familiar verse to each one of us, maybe some of you, you memorized this, the Bible says, and he said to me, my grace, everybody say, my grace. This grace is not our grace. This grace is God's grace. Jesus is the one talking to Paul. My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities, this is Paul speaking, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. And then in verse 10, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. That's a very powerful, wonderful verse. Amen? And there are times we use that every time we have problems, every time we have trials, and it's good. It's good to use those things. And in your outline, I have three things I would like to share with you. It's very important for us to realize and to understand that we need the strength of God not only once a month. We need the strength of God not only once a week. We need the strength of God every single moment of our life. You agree? So there are many people today, they don't know what to do. They don't know uh, what they're going to, uh, to do in their life when they encountered so many things trials and problems in their lives. That's why it is in our advantage that in spite of many things going on in our lives, praise God, we have that connection with God. We have that relationship with God. Paul was a missionary. Paul was anointed by God, a great apostle of the Lord, used by God in a mighty way. And, and, and through his life, God performed so many wonders, so many miracles. And yet, as he obeyed God, he suffered so many infirmities. He suffered so many troubles and trials. In other words, it doesn't mean if you are following the will of God or if you are in the center of God, you are already, um, you are already covered by all kinds of protection. There are times, you know, you, you, you are not, there are times you are in a situation that as you follow the will of God and, and serve God, problems may come. Trials may come. So the good thing about the attitude of Paul, he knew where to find strength. He knew where to be, where to get, to, to be connected. He knew where to draw strength, not from the world, but from the word. Then the number one I would like to share with you in this passage is this. Have strength in God's grace when you are desperate. How many of you are desperate? I don't know what kind of desperation. And many people today are desperate because of their economic woes. Broken families, sometimes they are trapped in big problems. So when people are in this situation, there are always, there are two kinds of reaction, all right, that can happen. 
the negative reaction that leads to anarchy and the positive reaction that leads in seeking the face of God, understanding His will and His word. In other words, it leads you to be more closer to God. So people, when they are desperate because of their financial situation, of their, of, of, of maybe because of the political situation or because of the, they lost their job, sometimes their negative reaction is to blame people, blame the family, blame the situation. In political arena, the, the, the government lost their hands and, and people become, in, they engage in anarchy, chaos. And sometimes when people are so desperate, they're willing to kill someone. People are willing to do bad things against somebody because they are desperate. For example, there are some people, they are desperate, you know, to get higher position. In their negative reaction, because they are desperate to get higher, this, the higher position, they are willing to destroy somebody's integrity just to get higher position. I know what, I've known one person in the Philippines. He's a very hardworking guy. When he started in his job, he was humble, submissive, but as the years goes by, this guy was promoted from one level to another until such a time that, you know, the managerial position is being offered. And in order for him to reach that position, he needs to work hard, harder. But there's another person achieving, trying to achieve that same position. And because he was so desperate to reach that position, and the other guy also desperate to reach that position. By the way, these two guys are best friends. The first one, so desperate to reach that position, he made stories against his best friend. Talking about his life, his uh, past, to their boss, to some colleagues, and all the negative things about his best friend. Until such a time, all those people were fed by poison. And they believed that this guy was bad and the first guy is a good guy. Yes, he got the position. At what cost? He lost his friendship. He got the position so desperate Willing to destroy anybody's integrity just to get that position. Don't you know there are so many people are engaged in that? Business people desperate to get more profit. They don't care if they're going to pull other people or give some products. The qualities are not good. As long as they get profit, it's good for them. They are desperate. So in their desperation, they're willing to kill. Sometimes, they're willing to commit suicide. And so on and so forth. But those people who are desperate and have a positive attitude, instead of be engaged in a negative one, they choose to seek the presence of God. There are going to be times in your life when you will feel desperate. But don't let desperation make you defeated. But instead, use that desperation to be more closer to God and experience more His ways and His will. 
See, desperation is the condition that exists when a recognized need is present. Especially if this is beyond our own ability to meet. There are some mothers, they are desperate to feed their families. I don't know, maybe some of you, you heard some news in the Philippines, some mothers, because they are desperate to feed their families, they even sell or give their daughters to prostitution just to get money. They engage in human trafficking just to have money. Some guys, you know, young people, fathers, desperate to get more money. They sell drugs. Some young students, in some universities in the Philippines, desperate to finish their course. And they knew they don't have money. They sell their bodies just to get money. Desperate. They recognize a present need. They can do anything beyond their own ability, so they are desperate doing things even If it is not God's will. Some people, they are desperate. They are willing to compromise their faith. They are willing to compromise their values, their system, their lifestyle, and even their relationship. The reality of life is that all of us, we have needs every day. A condition of desperation begins to develop in us. When the need is acknowledged, according to dictionary, desperate or desperation means dangerously reckless or violent as from urgency or despair or showing extreme courage, especially of actions courageously undertaken as a last resort or showing extreme urgency or intensity, especially because of great need of desire. But contrary to the popular understanding, desperation is not bad because there is a positive reaction in every desperation. So by the world's definition, desperation is a condition to be avoided at all costs. But from a divine perspective, as far as the Word of God is concerned, there are many blessings and promises of God that cannot be obtained apart from being desperate. So God also, in the, on the other hand, advocates desperation, not in the negative reaction, but in a way that pleases God and glorifies God, that leads us to be more closer to God. Because desperation, as we recognize it, become a powerful energy in our lives as we react positively. A desperate person doesn't care what other people may think or say. They will go where no one else will go. They won't let anything stop them. They will do desperate things. But I hope when we come to that point of desperation, don't sell your values. Don't compromise your faith. But instead, come closer to the presence of God. There are so many examples in the Bible where people are desperate for God's presence. They were down, discouraged, outcast, and yet in their desperation, you know, they walk closer to the presence of God. Remember the story of a poor friends who brought their paralytic friend to Jesus? In Mark chapter 2, beginning verse 1 to 13, Jesus entered into a certain house and preached the gospel. And there are so many people listening to him. The house is pulled back and, and, and it's really hard to go inside and these four friends they brought their bedridden friend and 
when they saw that there are so many people listening to Jesus, they were so desperate to bring their friend to Jesus. So what they did next, they went up on the top of the roof, they tear the roof up, and, and let down their friend. My friend, blessed are the desperate, for they are willing to tear up the roof if it is necessary just to encounter the Lord Jesus Christ. Another example in the life of a woman with an issue of blood for 12 years in Mark chapter 5, beginning verse 25 to 34. She was desperate, according to the story. She was rich. She has lots of money. She went from one doctor to another, but she became worse. And it's really hard for a lady like her to mingle with people, especially if a person has an issue of blood. Because during that time, if you have an issue of blood, your smell is not good. They can smell you. And there's something wrong inside of her body. And it's really hard for her to reach Jesus without being pushed, without being uh, set aside or, you know, being bullied inside the crowd. But in her desperation, she said to herself, if I will just touch the cloth of Jesus, I will be healed. So she kept repeating the same word in her desperation. And then the time when she touched the clock, the power of God was released and she was healed. Amen. In her desperation, instead of blaming others, instead of telling others, look what happened to me, I don't have money anymore, I tried everything. But when she heard about Jesus, hallelujah, in her desperation, she said, if I will just touch. And the, the, the spirit of God's healing, deliverance came to her. And then Jesus, looking for her, who touched me? The disciples have no idea. Who touched you, Lord Jesus? Why you are asking that question? There are so many people touching you. That's the problem. Only one person received the healing because in her desperation, she totally surrendered everything to God. Don't you know there are so many people there keep touching Jesus, let's say reading the word and, and listening to the word and no miracle is happening to them. Why? Because they are not desperate. They are doing it for the sake of their obligation. And they never experienced the power of God. But this lady, she was healed. She experienced the power of Jesus. Because she was desperate. Another story, Mark chapter 7, beginning verse 24 to 30. A Greek mother was desperate for her daughter to be healed from unclean spirits. He, 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 uh, her daughter was under the power of that of demon spirit. And when she asked for more, she asked for the healing of her daughter, the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. I came here not for you. I came here for the Jews. I came here for the tribe of Israel. Because she was not a Jew. She was a Greek mother. And when we talk about mother, mother is willing to do anything for their daughter, for their son, for their children. They're willing even to give their life. And now here, the, this mother has no way to... to to receive the mercy of Jesus. Because Jesus said, I'm not going to give my blessing to the dogs. But everything changed when the mother said this. If you can read that in Mark chapter 7, beginning verse 24 to 30, you just read it, the whole passage. She said, even the dogs eat the crumbs. And Jesus was shocked in her faith because of your faith. 
her daughter was delivered. Her daughter was released from the power of darkness. In her desperation, she is willing to eat even the crumbs. Remember the blind Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10? He keeps shouting, Son of David! Son of David! Then the disciples tried to stop him, but he was so desperate. And Jesus called him, and Jesus healed him, and Jesus delivered him. So when we are desperate, in a positive sense that leads us to be more closer to God, you better be ready because you have no idea what God is about to do in your life. Amen? Blessed are the desperate, for if it was not for them, the presence and the power of God will never be manifested in their lives and even in our churches at all. Last year, Philippines encountered so many calamities. We are devastated. And people are desperate, looking for solution. Another prophecy came that if the people of God will not pray and humble themselves, a big earthquake will, take, will happen in Metro Manila. They listened. And they obeyed and they humbled themselves and all the pastors gathered together in one place and they went to Marikina Pult and different Pults in the Philippines and prayed over, anointed the, the earthquake poles in different parts of Metro Manila and some parts of Luzon. Yes, the prediction ate something and above. Earthquake. And they are talking about 30 to 50,000 dead people. And we thank God. These people of God obeyed. And they desperately sought the face of God and asked the Lord's forgiveness. Yes, earthquake came, but not eight point something. It's only four point something. When we are desperate in our situation, instead of having negative reaction, look to God. Seek the face of God. If we are desperate for an encounter with the power of Almighty God, we can experience Him more. So, don't let your, des your, your, your desperation be an instrument of the devil to stop you reaching your destiny, but instead, use your desperation to reach your destiny. If you want to reach your destiny, to attain and achieve all that God has for you, you've got to lay down your mindset. You've got to lay down your attitude and perception of things. You've got to move forward in the things of God. You've got to learn how to move at His command. You've got to trust His word. Learn how to go forward in His presence, experience His power, and receive the promises of God. Amen? Praise God. So, have strength in God's grace. When you are desperate. Number two, have strength in God's grace when you are by yourself. Have you been in a situation when you find yourself isolated and alone? Nobody cares, nobody understands. You are uh, by yourself. You feel you are disconnected and far away from others. And sometimes you've been in a group and still you feel you are by yourself. The apostle Paul experienced that. And he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 and 26, he said that he was put in jail more often. He was whipped times without number. He faced death again and again. Five different times the Jews gave him 39 lashes. Three times he was beaten with sticks. He was stoned. He experienced shipwreck. He was spent a whole night and a day adrift at sea. He traveled many weary miles. He faced danger in cities, deserts, and stormy seas. And there are times he was down and, 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 and he was by himself. 
Church, sometimes God will remove people's confidence in you in order for you to gain confidence in God. In order for you not to rely on your own strength and abilities. Many are living in a state of loneliness, living in themselves alone, dislocated and misunderstood. And they are distressed, depressed, forgotten, and alone. Remember the life of Elijah in the cave in 1 Kings chapter 19? He was used by God mightily. In 1 Kings chapter 18, he defeated 850 false prophets of Baals and Asherahs. But when he received a death threat from Jezebel, he ran for his life. And he went into a cave by himself, exhausted, distressed, discouraged, down. Imagine after his great victory, he was discouraged, he was exhausted. And that's true. Every time we face problems or trials, we're exhausted. And he said to God, when God confronted him, God, I'm the only one left. All of your prophets are dead. And God rebuked him. You're wrong. I saved 7,000 more. You think you can manipulate your life by being anointed and used by God in a mighty way? So many miracles happen in your life or in your ministry. See, Elijah thought his life was no much compared to his grandparents, grandfathers. He was exhausted, down, alone. Then God spoke to him, what are you doing here? In 1 Kings chapter 19, what are you doing here? So if you, if you are in a position or situation right now, you are by yourself and you have so many questions in your life, maybe the Lord is asking you, what are you doing here? So when he asked that question, it means, Elijah, your mission is not done yet. What are you doing here? Why you pity for yourself? Why you think you are by yourself and you are alone and, and, and you are exhausted and discouraged? Don't you know I am your God, I am with you and I promise I will never leave you, I will never abandon you. See, when you see yourself and you find yourself alone, stressed, distressed, find God's grace. Go to the presence of God. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it, says the Lord? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. You are not alone. Amen? The reason sometimes we feel we are alone is because we try to magnify or justify our circumstances. But God, the promise of God, I will never leave you orphan. I am with you. I will be with you. Amen? The third one is have strength in God's grace when you don't know what's next. Have you been in that situation? Lord, what's next? I'm exhausted. I tried everything, you know. Let me encourage you. God is going to build trust even when you don't know what to do next. And Paul according to our passage, prayed about his situation, but nothing happened. How many times? Three times, apostle of the Lord, used by God in many miracles. And yet, in his own problem, he prayed to God and God did not answer. When somebody called him, Pastor Paul, I am sick, pray for me. And then he prayed and, he, and the guy, you know, got healed. And then when, when, when someone will come to him and ask for counseling, and then Paul gave counsel, counsel and they will be blessed. When somebody is in need and, and they will ask Paul's help, Paul will help them. Now Paul is having a hard time. 
He got some sickness in his body. And he prayed to God three times. And God did not answer him. Out of his situation, the only thing he knew to do it is to dwell in God's grace because he doesn't have any idea what to do next. Lord, I tried my best. You know, I'm trying very hard. I prayed for those people. I ministered to this group. You, wherever you told me to go, I, 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 I obeyed you. Now, I have a problem. I... I, I Praying for your answer and there's no answer. What are you going to do? Have you been, have you experienced that? Lord, how come? This lady asked me, Pastor, pray for my need. And I prayed and you bless her. Then somebody asked for this and you bless him. Oh, you bless her. Now I have a need. And there's no answer? I think it's unfair, oh God. Listen, sometimes we go through trials even when we are being obedient to Jesus. It doesn't mean God is punishing us. My perception is this. If I am obedient to God and I have a need, and God is not answering my need. My perception is this. God is about to bring me into a new level where I can experience more of Him and receive more of His blessing. I'm not going to question God because of that kind of prayer. Though you pray, Lord, this is my prayer, and if you will not answer my prayer, tomorrow I'll quit. Lord, this is my need. If you will not answer my need, I will not come to church anymore. Nobody can manipulate God using your prayer. When we go through trials and we don't know what next, learn to trust God. When you are uncomforted, God will comfort you for sure. And in your troubles, you need to rise and comfort others. When God rescues us in answer to our prayers, glorify God. When you get knocked down and you don't know what, what to do next, get up again and keep going. Remember, no matter how long the trouble we are experiencing, put it in your heart, in your mind, it won't last forever. Keep pressing on. We can't, we can't afford to lose the presence of God. Stay in His presence. Otherwise, we can get caught up in the wrong pursuits in life and forget what our main focus should be. God knows what He's doing. Amen? I remember a friend of mine, he was used by God in a mighty way. Every time he prayed for cancer, People are being healed. Then one day he got cancer. And he asked God, why? Why? And then God spoke to him in different ways. In order for you to glorify me more. Lord, did I, did I not glorify you every time I, 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 I pray for those people who got cancer? And then God rebuilt his heart. Yes, you glorify me, but some part of it, you glorify yourself. You think you are more anointed than anybody else. You think you are better than anybody else. Because in your group, you are the only one operating in that kind of miracle. And you don't even submit to your senior pastor. God spoke to him. And he humbled himself and said, Okay, God, I surrender everything. Because whatever miracles, whatever blessings we receive, always remember it comes from God. It is not your product. It is only because of His grace that you enjoy all of those blessings. One day, it will be gone. What are you going to do next?
Are you going to worship God and follow Him and, 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 and serve Him more? Or are you going to, go, to give some condition? Lord, I will serve you more if you will protect me. I will, I will serve you more if you will bless me more money. I will, I will bless, I will serve you more, Lord God, if you will take care of my body. If I am healthy, if I have, if I have good job, if I have good money, Lord, I will serve you. I will do my very best. But how about if you are sick? How about if you, are, if you lost your job? How about if you are by yourself and you don't know what to do next? Are you still willing to serve the Lord? Are you still willing to follow God? You've been wandering through life trying to find meaning in your life. Jesus is your only hope of finding true meaning. So maybe you have let your pursuit of power and wealth and pleasure lead you to a place in your life that has brought you sadness and stress. We are in a journey called life. Let's finish the journey. Our faithfulness does not depend on our riches our faithfulness does not depend whether we have good health or we don't have good health our faithfulness does not depend how big our house is how many cars we have how how secure our 401k how, how, our faithfulness does not depend on the things of this world that can be offered our faithfulness is rooted in the word of god rooted in the word of god hello Finish the journey well. Tell to your neighbor, finish the journey well. Because it is not how you started, but how you finish in Christ that counts. Anticipate challenges in your life. When going through tough times of challenges, look to God's word, trust Him every step of the way. I like this quote of one preacher and he said, God does not promise an easy passage, but He does guarantee a safe landing. How many of you, every time you use airplane going to Manila, you pray hard? Or you don't pray at all because, you know, you're used to it. Then all of a sudden, when you are passing the Pacific Ocean and that there's turbulence, you pray, Oh God, oh God, have mercy, have mercy. Then when everything is okay, you return to the same attitude. Okay, thank you. When there's a turbulence, yes, you pray desperately. Agree? Realize that there are some things you are not meant to change, but you are meant to survive. That's why God told Paul, Three times he prayed for his trouble, but it didn't depart. God told him, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. His situation was not meant for him to change, but for him to rely more on God. Church, find strength in God's grace when you are desperate. Find strength in God's grace when you are by yourself. And when you don't know what's next, he is in control. He knows what he's doing. You just trust him and put everything in his hands. Amen. Shall we all stand?